Okay, so Monday Night Raw last night. We can do the first match, and it's a special match. Raw was in Montreal last night, so it was in Canada. And Pat McAfee was saying French stuff. The crowd was doing the whole ole, ole, ole thing, which I hate because it reminds me of the Montreal Canadiens games, and I hate them to death. Um, but the first match was a cool one because it was the return of a very popular wrestler who had been out for quite a while due to neck surgery and uh, complications. And his name is Seamus. He took on Ivar of the Viking Raiders. So that's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of meat in that uh, match there. And of course, Seamus won in his return and everything, and people were pumped, you know, because he is he is a favorite of a lot of people, right? Oh my god! But the whole show began. I missed the end of Raw last week because I always miss the last hour, right? Because I go to bed at 10 and it goes till 11. But I guess last week, Liv Morgan came out and ambushed Rhea Ripley because Rhea Ripley was was who injured Liv. Like, I don't know, what was it? Eight months ago or whatever it was and Liv was on the shelf for a while until she came back at Royal Rumble. So that was the whole... Um, that was the whole uh, motivation behind right now Liv is on Liv Morgan's revenge tour right and it's all about she was out for so long and she's out for blood right so I guess she came out and ambushed Rhea Ripley sometime in that last hour of Raw that I missed last week and so to start the show off last night Rhea Ripley came out to the ring and her arm was in a sling and she says, I'm going to miss a number of months because of Liv's ambush and my arm is fucked and whatever. Um, so she has to vacate the women's title. So I don't know how they're going to determine who gets it. They'll probably have a contenders match and then and then whatever to see who, who gets to take it over from Rhea Ripley. So... While Rio was out there doing that, Liv's Mor Liv Morgan's music hit, and she came out, and security came out, and was keeping the two from getting to each other. And uh, Liv eventually got taken back behind the curtain, and Rio Ripley ended up headbutting one of the security guards into oblivion. It was pretty funny. So that was how the whole show began. Um, and it's too bad. It's too bad Rhea Ripley's going to be out because she is amazing and she's so much fun and I love her. Um, but at the same time, you know, she's had the belt for a year since last year's WrestleMania. So it's going to give a chance for somebody else to take it over for a little while, whatever. Or for it to change hands even a couple times, whatever, in the meantime. So it's nice to give that opportunity to somebody else and, and make things interesting, right? Because, like, when Roman Reigns had the championship for over three years, like, it just gets boring, right? It's like, come on, like, it's... You don't want titles changing hands, like, every fucking week or anything like that. You don't want them changing hands too often. But you can't have somebody keeping it for that long. It just gets stale, you know, in my opinion. Um, so this will be something... As, as much as we'll miss Rhea and everything, um, it'll be nice to give somebody else some opportunity... And Alexa Bliss is supposed to be coming back, I think, at SummerSlam or something. So, you know, Rhea Ripley's going away, but Alexa Bliss is coming back. And Liv Morgan just recently came back at the Rumble. So, you know, there's always people coming in and out, which which keeps it fresh and interesting and whatever. Um, and that's what I really liked about this year's WrestleMania. And I, I mentioned this before, is that there were so many title fights. And of so many title fights, like... What? God, I wasn't even paying attention to the count because I was so into the match and what I was talking about. Oh, sorry, that's a bit of a letdown for the first match. Um, but yeah, there's so many title matches at WrestleMania this year, and so many of the belts changed hands, which I liked. Um, more on that in a minute. But uh, the next thing that happened was Triple H came out, and he was out there with the Raw general manager, Adam Pierce. And and 
they they presented Miz and R Truth with the new they got some new belts for the Raw Tag Team Champions, and it was so funny because R Truth thinks Tommaso Ciampa of DIY is Triple H, and Johnny Gargano, his partner, is is Heartbreak Kid. So when Triple H was out there and Miz was like, Triple H wants to give you what? He's like, what? That's not Triple H. That's Tommaso Ciampa, who is actually the, one of the DIY members, right? Like, it was so funny. Oh, my God. But anyways, they got this these new belts. And uh, the next match they had was to determine. Oh, shit. That's not what I want. Um... There we go. So it was a three-way tag match to figure out who's going to be the number one contender to take on Miz and R-Truth for the uh, for the tag team belts. And funny enough, oh god, I can't even get close with these guys. The team that won was DIY. <laughs> So there's Triple H on the far left there, right? And Heartbreak Kid beside, beside him on the right. <laughs> oh, my God. So they took on, uh, I think, Kofi Kingston's probably closest. There we go. So they took on, it's a new day. Yes, it is. And then the third team was uh, probably up here. The Creed Bros. Pretty good match. They always manage to put on a good show, these tag teams, because there's lots of... The, the Creed Brothers are so powerful and got some cool moves. And then the other guys are... New Day's a lot of high-flying stuff, and DIY's, like, kind of in between, you know? Like, they always put on a good show. Tornado tag with multiple teams facing off. Things are going to get frantic fast. Swinney is back to it, so... Yeah, so at like... You know, at WrestleMania, so many titles changed. And the best part of the titles that did change was belts that people had held on to for so long that they needed to keep it fresh, right? Um, like... Roman Reigns, after almost four years, finally lost his belt to Cody Rhodes, right? Um, Gunther, who had had the Intercontinental Championship for for two years, uh, close to, lost to Sami Zayn, right? And then even the Judgment Day, they'd, they'd had the uh, tag team belts for a little while. And that one was even better because they had both sets of tag team belts. So we got two new sets of championships with... Um, a town down under getting one and then of course the awesome truth getting the other one so it was just a really good show and nice to see those belts change hands so um, it'll be nice if going forward some of them change hands somewhat quickly and some of them are held on to for at least a little bit you know but yeah i thought it was a really good uh a really good show and now that Rhea Rhea retained hers at wrestlemania she was one of the couple only of, of people that retained but now she's having to give it up right so not long after Wrestlemania she's out of the championship right so but yeah so I wonder like it's obviously probably a scripted change um, in, in injury so I wonder if maybe I don't know maybe she's got some life stuff going on or maybe she's pregnant like who knows right like you just never know they get time off sometimes, and, and uh, there's usually a reason for it, right? Pedigree! Oh no, reversal now! Uh oh. Whoop -ah. Come on, Triple H. What the 
Fuck. So yeah, so that's how Raw began. And then we had the Sheamus Ivar match. And then we had Awesome Truth coming out with Triple H and Adam Pearce, and which led into this match here. For a while, I really thought the Creeds were gonna win. I thought it was really looking like the Creeds. Nice. She's only paying attention to the submission, not the pin. Fuck. Like. Get him, Johnny. Go get him, Johnny. Keep him busy. I'm going to try and finish this guy. Pedigree. No, not pedigree. Oh, either way. Deadly. Oh, just. It was a really delayed count, and I thought Julius was going to get there. HBK and Triple H. Great chemistry tonight. They are riding high on this win. This celebration might carry on the rest of the month. So the next match I can't do. It was a tag team ladies match. Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae took on Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree again, which kicked off Candice LeRae's whole mean streak that she's on lately. And this time, Indy was a little more on board and was being a little more nasty, and they ended up winning. And then after that, Andrade, who is recently aligned with the LWO, took on Dominic Mysterio and, and won that match. And I can't do that one because I don't have Andrade. After that, it was another ladies tag team match, which I can do. Oh. So. Just 
Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin, but we don't have Piper Nevin. She was known at the time as Dewdrop. Took on. Katana Chance and Caden Carter. Uh, pretty entertaining match. Chelsea Green got the pin kind of as a surprise kind of roll up, I think it was, or something. She's so entertaining, Chelsea Green. I can't remember if I've talked about her before, but I saw an interview with her. Because she plays kind of like this really demanding, annoying, kind of entitled kind of person, her character, right? But she's also kind of a coward and, and whatever. And and because of that, like, she never really wins that much. But I saw an interview with her saying, like, like to me it's not about winning. It's about, you know... How did I make the crowd feel during my match? Like, you know, did I get their emotions going? Did they laugh? Did they, you know? It's all about crowd reaction and, and, and making people entertained, right? Um, which I kind of get because it's all scripted anyways, you know? Like, so, like, winning's one thing if you're playing in the NHL and, and, and the action is, like, it is what it is. Um, and it just, what happens is what happens, but in, in wrestling it's scripted, right? So, you know going into a match if you're going to lose or not, so it's it's not necessarily about winning, right? Like, I really think her philosophy is, is a good one, you know, like... Um, so I thought that was really smart, you know? And you can see that in her character, right? Is, she plays such a good character, and you know, like, she loves to entertain, right? Like, you can just see it. And she's Canadian, too, so I was kind of... I found that out not too long ago. She's from, like, Victoria or Vancouver or something, and I was like, yes. Because I really like her. She's hot as hell, too. Oh, my God. Now, her character in this game is a created one. It's not, it didn't come with the game, so. She doesn't necessarily look as good as she maybe should, you know. She looks huge in this game. Like, she looks massive, right? Not done yet. Look how big she is compared to Katana. Like, <laughs> turning the tables there. Unbelievable athleticism. Ducking out of trouble. Oh, God. Ooh, what a forward call. Why did you hear that? Right to the back of the net. Oh, able to get there in time. Caught with a clothesline. Crank up the energy. She reversed it? Become the strategy here. And Caden was scouted there. Oh, a kick to the back. And momentum is slipping away from Carter. Yeah, Carter's defensive instincts need to kick in. to not even get a two count at this point. I'd say. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. 
Spent a special on that. Didn't even get anything. Oh, what the fuck? Where are you going? Oh, what the f big right hand. Oh, gets cracked by the overhand. These two trade encounters and absolute master. Oh, shit. Big backbreaker will put an end to that offense. <laughs> Caught an elbow to the gut for that effort. And set right into the corner. What? Jesus Christ. Oh, nice. Got her. I didn't know if I was gonna get the count, and I didn't know if Kitana was gonna stay down long enough too. So it all worked out. Two great superstars that go great together, and that win is proof. These two looking like a force to be reckoned with in the women's tag team division. I like Piper Devin. All right, so last two matches of the night, I can do both of them. First one was a one on one. sure how this one came about. I'm not sure if Jay got up in the Bloodlines business at some point or if it was just a kind of scheduled match or whatever. But he ended up taking on my favorite member of Judgment Day besides Rhea Ripley who's they're kind of tied. Finn Balor. And Jay ended up winning. Now I didn't I think the Chelsea Green, Piper Niven versus Caden and Katana match was the last one I saw last night. I went to bed after that one, so I didn't see these last two. I kind of saw Jay being interviewed before the match backstage sort of thing, and that was it. We've all known Jay Uso for many years now, but lately he's looked like a completely different competitor altogether. We've seen a complete transformation in terms of his attitude and approach to in-ring competition. Yeah, Jay Uso is meaner and more focused than ever. His demeanor is now combative, and he walks around the WWE with nothing but pure malice in his eyes. It's like Jay is always looking to pick his next fight. Well, a fight is what Jay's got tonight. I'm sure Jay's more aggressive nature will be coming into play in this one. And then you... From way up, blow to the abdomen, gets them out of that. Oh, what a close line. Carefully measured knee drop. Punches to the ear? How are they going to hear after this match? Bam! Elbow drop. Jumping clothesline. What agility. Jay has 
become relentless. A fully focused Jey Uso right here. No half measures on the attack to Balor there. That is the meaner, more aggressive Jey Uso coming out to play. When taking on Jey Uso, you have the constant looming threat of his devastating super kick. How do you strategize around that attack as Jey's opponent? Well, I've taken a few of those, so I know you can take the super kick out of the equation entirely by attacking Jay's legs. Well-targeted offense on Jay's lower half will make it difficult for him to land that attack in full force. If you can't do that, then I hope you're really good at dodging kicks. Counter my counter. Snapmare takedown. Oh, single leg drop kick. Rolling outside, and he's look. Look out! Oh no! Crashing hard onto the floor. Tempted fate and paid dearly for it. That haphazard approach definitely proved costly. Enable the counter. Oh. oh. section there. Finn appears helpless. What's going to happen? Beautiful shot block. Oh, what a headbutt. Jay ready to end things. Jay has a full grip. Oh, okay. Bowers in deep peril here. He's testing fate here in danger of a countout. Stirring back to his feet. Ooh. <laughs> Incredible. Just a devil may care attitude on full display. Going for broke and from the top. Oh. That's a bad landing. An absolutely terrible landing ringside. A shining look to rearrange your face. Balor making clear he is not going to back down. In this fight. Oh, oh shit. Getting dangerously close to our desk. That's it. I'm out of here. Goes under the ropes to get back inside. Two. Oh, there's a response against Finn. <laughs> Straight up just a kick to the face. Yeah, Byron, you are dangerously close to being collateral damage in this one. Strong display from main event Jey Uso, but he'll be hitting the showers if he shows off too long. Oh, look at this! I don't want to be part of these problems. These problems. Oh, I tried. Who dis? Hold on a second. Huh. I was worried about this happening. The 
In the ring, come on. Priest, you son of a bitch. Jay puts a stop to that. <laughs> oh, what a punch. Set him up a the leg sweep. Saw that one coming. And this is going to be it. Oh, that would have been a cool ending. Defuse Priest's uh, interference and then... What? Alright. Oh my god. That is just pure instinct at this point. Can there be frustration mounting in these competitors knowing it's going to take more to win? Another way, woman. You can't let those feelings seep into your psyche. You have to keep your focus. Come on, lady. Start counting. What the fuck? Wow. She really didn't want me to win this match, eh? Here is your winner. Just me, Oos. This kind of win establishes him to the world. An important win for him in this one. Is there a club for losers Finn Balor can join after that performance? Yeah, the Sax Club. Oh, offside. Four oh eight. That's a pretty good score. Not that I need credits anymore. But. Last match was another one on one, and it was the new. <sighs> The new Intercontinental Champion giving a shot to the guy that helped him train and get to the point where he could beat Gunther, Mr. Chad Gable. Gave him a little shout out by giving him a title match. A little thank you for the assistance, so to speak. All right, Samuel. And a former Olympian is Chad Gable, an athlete in the mold of some of the greatest amateur wrestlers we've ever seen in WWE. It's a big reason Kurt he Angle. calls himself the master. Well, Gable's with the Gable looks man. just like Kurt Angle. Like it's just an intrinsic knowledge of the sport. And a it's it's kind of scary how they the look so so much alike, and they're both Olympic goal, medalists, I think, right? Like, it's a title that he earned. Oh, thank you. Yeah, right. Silly me. How could I forget? And unfortunately for all of us, he's in there tonight with Sami Zayn. This guy is just a parasite and a cheat. He never met a shortcut he didn't want to take. You are a heathen and a buffoon, Saxton. You call Zayn a parasite, you call him a strategist. Sami is always looking for the best path to victory, and he's pretty good at finding it. Does he cut a corner or two? Maybe. But you know what they say about ends and means. He ends meet them. Meh. This. Nobody comes into a match hoping to get chucked around like that. Not a lot of holes in Chad Gable's game. Is there anything an opponent can exploit? Gable rightfully thinks highly of himself, but that can create a sense of security that a smart opponent might be. We're gonna finish it off. Huh. Oh, no, we don't need this right now. More interference. Sure we do. The more the Sheesh. Is it Otis? These two are having a fantastic matchup. There he goes, right into the corner. Oh, the O'Connor roll. Look at the power. Oh. Into the corner. What strength by Chad Gable. That's a beef roll. Gable make it pay off. Shoulders down. Oh, my God. Very few superstars possess the fortitude to do what we just witnessed. Very few. Up. And Zane looked rock. 
If he's got a strategy, he might want to think about tapping into it. Gable really showed his ring of knowledge with that one. Taking a trip outside, but he's got to be mindful of the count. Stomping down. Oh, I had that well scouted. Drop kick. Great athleticism. Oh, man. Oh, this is just disrespectful. And an elbow drop for added measure. Ah, oh, heel hook. Look at this. Oh, that's so painful. It's hard to watch, too. Elusiveness from Gable. And a well-executed move we just saw there. Back in the ring now. As if Sammy couldn't be any more annoying. He needs to find his way back into the ring. The count just keeps going up. Finds a counter for Gable. You can't take much more of this. Yeah, not looking good at all. Now is the time for Chad Gable to find a way to shift into that extra gear. Rope brick. Zane heads up high and returning to the ring. The hell's going on there? And Gable had it scouted. Counter upon counter. Great minds thinking of luck. Placing them into the corner. Oh, the Paloma, but I wasn't sure how to do it. You got to be running and then get the right distance and then press it. Shot after shot with its ruthless striking. Zane's feeling it. Gable has to gather the energy to turn the tables. From the top. Ah. Oh. Got him. All right. Your winner, folks. Good Mitch. Good Sammy Mitch. Zane. Here is your winner, Sammy Zayn. How sweet it is for Sammy Zayn. Looks like the Sammy Show continues to roll tonight. How do we get the Saxton Show canceled? Huh? So that means it's time for my rise.
La patata ta Mop, mop. Justine. Was there anything? Maybe there was something I had to do in here. Yep, okay. Yes, I am. Let's do it. I'm not sure I remember this guy. Oh, maybe. I think I remember his bare feet. That's kind of stood out to me, right? Bare feet. Pressing the opposite, like I'm thinking it's gonna be triangle. It's R1. I think it's R1. It's good. It's triangle. Like, uh. I fucking press triangle. Come on. Thank you. 
Come on, ref. I'm just trying to jump on this guy. Oh fuck! What was that pathetic? Fucking move. Beauty, beauty, beauty. That's fun. Music cut out. Play the game. Ah. Smoking gun.
Oh, dis. It's kind of weird music for a big bruiser like him. How many more? One more? Two more? There we go, here's some new music. for the action. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, you fucker. Fucker. Oh, reversal into the DDT. <laughs> no. That's okay. Stay down. Stay down. With two of them left, it's like, just let them maybe pound on each other for a bit. Nuts! 